What's up, Crusaders? Welcome back to another episode of Arcade Crusade. In this week's video, we are going to continue working on the track and field restoration. Uh, this video will be part two in the track and field restoration. Uh, we're just going to continue working on the cabinet for this video. Um, I need to figure out the leg leveler situation. Um, I have, I actually ended up cutting a new speaker panel, so we're going to put that on. I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, and then I'm actually going to spray the Century logo on the coin door. I'm hoping to get all that done today. So I'm going to go set up the camera in the garage and we will start with the leg levelers. All right, guys. So uh, we got the cabinet out in the garage. It's, uh, it's just laying down right now. And actually, uh, I got a screw pulled out looking at this. But these leg leveler plates, the inside threads are completely gone on three of the four. Only one of them is actually allowing a leg leveler to go in. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and replace these leg leveler plates. Um, and I actually ordered some new ones. So let me put this in front of the camera. Uh, this is basically called a weld nut or it's a T-nut that you can mount with screws. And um, I got this from McMaster Car. They're a supplier of, of weld nuts and just you know various hardware things. These are your... Um, 3 8 16 thread for your leg levelers and I like these better because of this long sleeve that goes into the wood. Uh, this is three quarters of an inch long, same thickness as the wood and this is a long sleeve that goes through. It keeps your leg leveler a lot more sturdy rather than those giant plates that um, all the like twisted quarter cells and everyone, they sell two and a half or like two and three quarter plates. I mean they're huge plates. And for me to make that work, I would have had to drill new holes in the bottom of this. By using these, I won't have to do that. This will just slide right in perfectly. It'll be the same thickness and it'll be more sturdy. Um, so basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all four of these brackets. Um, it's just four screws each. I'm gonna remove those, uh, pre-drill into the wood for these and we will put these on super straightforward. But um, I think this is a pretty good solution for a leg leveler plate and instead of using those huge ones uh this is it's called a weld nut so and, and if you go to your local hardware store they make t-nuts that you can screw on basically the same thing you just got to get the right threads for your leg levelers and you'll be good so uh, i'm just going to go ahead and take these plates off put these on and uh, we'll go from there All right guys, so I went ahead and I got all four new leg leveler plates on. Um, I just pre-drilled before I put the screws in and then put them in super tight. Uh, I tested one leg leveler for fitment all the way on the right side. But uh, yeah, if you, if you look at these things, these things are destroyed. This is the only one that kind of worked. And if you look at it, it there's a crack right there. This one, threads are completely gone. It, it was only this deep of threads that were holding onto those legs on the bottom. So, you know, over the years, from probably sitting in damp environments, they just disintegrated. Now we have ones that are three quarters all the way through the bottom, um, and they're going to be super sturdy. So, 
Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put the leg levelers on all four, and then I'm going to start tearing the T-molding off. Um, so we can just pull off the T-molding around the whole game now that it's going to be off the ground. We can put it on some, uh, some sliders. We can slide it around the garage. Um, yeah, that, that'll help a lot. So I'm going to finish putting these leg levelers on. We'll rip the T-molding off, and then we can start working on our next thing after that. All right, guys, so got the all the T-molding off. This is a sample piece of T-molding from T-molding.com. Um, if you know anything about track and field, and it's kind of hard to tell because there's paint here, um, but there's a little painted edge here. Um, the T-molding's offset on this game. So actually, um, what the previous person did is they put black T-molding on and then painted next to it so you couldn't really tell. Um, but what I, I'm going to do red on this game when we restore it, and uh, what this is, this is 7 eighths T-molding. So if you get 7 eighths, your inner edge will be near perfect. You won't have to trim it. It's so close to the edge. It's not perfect, but it's so close to the edge you won't even notice. And then you have to get a quad edge trimmer. Um, I think John's Arcade has a video on it. Um, T-molding.com sells it. It's a $20 tool, and it trims your T-molding. So you just come with the trimmer, and you just slide, well, I would only have one side, and just slide right against it, and it will, it'll take that off. Um, and when you use that, you need to do it on a flat side. So this is my 7, seven eighths test piece. Um, fits perfectly there, and then the, um, the top will get trimmed. If we look at our corners here, um, it's going to take a good, decent amount of Bondo to rebuild all of this. And um, on this side, it's, it's the bottom here, bottom there, and then the, uh, the top corner. And on the other side, it's really only the bottom two. Um, I got some aluminum L brackets that we're hopefully going to rebuild. We're basically going to put L brackets right here and just kind of fill in with Bondo and hopefully just rebuild this corner like perfectly. Um, hopefully that works. If not, I'll just return them, but it should work with the, with the size L brackets I got. Um, new leg levelers. I went about four threads, tighten them all up with our new plates. These things are perfect, much better than having those big plates underneath and having to, you know, move over the big holes in the bottom of the board. Um, kind of swept all this up. There's the old ones. And yeah, if you look at this old T molding, there was a bunch of spots where they had nails pushed through, um, just trying to keep it on. And this is three quarter inch textured T molding, which isn't right for this game. This game had, I think, 13 sixteenths offset T molding. So, like I said, if you get seven eighths and trim it, it's about perfect. So, now that's all handled, I'm going to clean up all of this stuff, sweep up the garage, you know, throw all this away. I have no use for it um, and garbage days tomorrow. So I'll clean all that up and then I have a brand new, and you'll, you'll actually see now, um, I took the speaker panel out. I hit it out, it had some nails, I had to pry it out and then I cut the nails and, and kind of snuck it out of there. And uh, I brought it over to my buddy's house and he, uh, he cut and routed me a brand new speaker panel for this so now we have to clamp it up and put it in so we're gonna do that and uh yeah so i'll get this thing stood up and we'll get set up to put the new speaker panel on i'll show you guys what it looks like and everything all right guys so i uh stood the cabinet up got it facing the front so we got some good light here um, but this is the 
brand new speaker panel that, uh, that my friend cut me. And basically, I took my speaker panel off the cabinet and uh, basically had three nails coming through on each side. So I pried it forward and I came in with a pair of uh, wire snips and I cut those nails. So I was actually able to kind of sneak this thing out and I brought it to his house and we basically just cut a board one for one with the original. So we clamped them together. We took our measurements, cut a peach. This is half inch ACX plywood. I like plywood better than MDF because it doesn't fall apart. Um, so we, I got a nice piece of half inch ACX and we cut it to size, then we clamped them together and we uh, traced and routed the speaker holes and then put in our holes for our um, speaker bolts and then the, um, the wing nut bolts uh, on the bottom. So basically what we're gonna do is this just is gonna kind of sneak and I sanded down the edges a little bit to get it to fit right and we're just gonna kind of push it in there so there it is right there and then all we have to do is it's got to get raised to about like there and uh, centered and straightened out and what I'm gonna do is I got some clamps here and I'll show you the clamps that I have um, I'm gonna take both of these clamps and we are going to clamp this thing up. So I'm gonna come back behind here and clamp it to the braces back here on both sides, just like this. And uh, I'm gonna take my measurements, make sure we got it good, clamp it. We're gonna come in to the front and I kind of rigged up my drill. So I have an extension bit and then I have a uh, cobalt um, countersink bit. So drills into the wood and then countersinks into uh, the side that we need it to. So with this, I should be able to kind of get enough room here to actually drill into those braces back there. I'm only gonna put four screws in um, instead of, cause then if I do six, I'll be fighting the nails that are still in the wood. Um, so I'm just gonna do four here and here, here and here and uh, put those new ones in. And I'll tell you what size I have once I go grab them, but we'll get this thing clamped up and ready to go. All right guys, so I got the speaker panel in. Um, I got it lined up pretty much square on all four sides. Got the spacing from the back brackets from the pictures I took. Um, so I clamped it up nice and tight. So now we're in a spot that we can just take our bit and figure out exactly where we want this at. Um, it should be good. Maybe let's go a little bit higher right there. Back it out. All right, there we go. And there's our countersink, countersink bit. Um, and same thing on this side. Just kind of make sure we're in the right spot and try to be even with our hole. not perfect because we got to go pretty close to the edges here but you know we just got to kind of deal with what we're dealing with here make sure we're still tight here make sure this cobalt bits all the way in and same thing down here just go like right in the center here flip it
same thing on this side. Just kind of try to eyeball it. sink the first one a little too much but hopefully these bolts go in and uh, I mean these screws go in and we'll be fine but that's all four holes pre-drilled and I'm gonna get my Phillips 2-bit set up and what I got was number 10 uh, inch and a quarter wood screws um, so these should be the exact length. It's a three quarter inch bracket back there. And a, um, it's a three quarter inch bracket and a inch, uh, or I mean a half inch uh, speaker panel. So, oh, and I dropped it. Okay. go that's countersunk in there and these are going to get painted over blue so we're not really going to notice them after we're done and uh, we're just going to do the same thing over here make sure that's countersunk now we'll do the same thing back over here now that this is all the way in should be good and we can put the other four in or other two I mean sorry all right let's make sure we don't strip this thing out maybe I should be using a Phillips 3 bit. It seems like the 2 is uh 2 might not be right for this. Let's switch to a 3. Yeah, this might be better. fit here. All right. It looks to be countersunk. the camera with me I just wanted to double check um, to make sure that we're all the way through here this one kind of went in at a weird angle but I wish it was more countersunk like how this one went in. We can go at a different angle. It doesn't really seem like it's like grabbing to anything. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that one. Maybe we have to uh, 
try to go in at a different angle or something. Uh, but the other ones are in. So now uh, I'm going to leave the clamps on until I fix that last one. But our new speaker panel's in. It looks great. So, All right, guys. So uh, now we got the entire speaker panel on. Uh, let me turn this light on. Uh, this one up here was giving me a hard time. It wasn't catching right to the wood. It was just a little too close there. Uh, so I moved it down and I pre-drilled down here. And uh, we just had to move it a little bit lower. It was fine on the other side, though, so I left that one. Um, so well, all I, I think I've decided I'm going to get a little tube of wood filler. And we're just going to, since these are countersunk, we can fill over these screws. You won't even know they're there. Um, they should never have to get removed. Um, and then i got to decide... I think I might take the speaker panel bolts and drop them in there. When I go to paint this, they'll get painted too, and then we don't have to do it separate. Uh, so I got to sand those down and drop those in. But now we got our new speaker panel in. It's, I mean, it's nice and solid now, and it looks way better than the one that was there that was cracked down the middle. So, um, and this is already sanded, ready to go. So this is ready for paint. And uh, yeah, so now we can. Uh, now we can turn our attention to the coin door. I gotta get the stencil and all my painters tape and everything. We can get that taped up and ready to go. And uh, we'll spray the Century logo on the coin door and I'll walk you guys through that. So I'll get set up for that and we'll go from there. All right guys, so I got the coin door ready. Um, I'm just gonna kinda wipe it down. Some grass on the other side, but uh, I'm just gonna kinda wipe it down as we go to put this on. But um, what I have here is a Centuri stencil for, uh, for the coin door, so we can spray white spray paint on, and it'll leave the exact Centuri logo that's supposed to be on this coin door like it originally was. And rather than trying to hunt down an original Centuri stenciled coin door, we can just make our own. Um, I got this stencil from my friend Chance that runs the Canadian Arcade YouTube channel. He's working on a track and field restoration right now, um, same time I am. So um, he, I, I hit him up and I said, hey, um, you know, I'll give you some money if you could create a stencil for me so I could spray paint this. And he also made a stencil for my Cubert coin door. I sprayed a Gottlieb logo on it, which is kind of custom because the Cubert coin door... Um, it normally has a raised letter coin door. Um, so I sprayed the Gottlieb logo on it. Um, so now I'm gonna spray the Centuri logo on this one. This, this, this stencil's a little too big, so I'm gonna cut this down on all four sides and we're gonna kinda even it with the lock hole and just kinda even it side to side and we got one decent shot at this. It's not gonna be perfect, but just get it good enough, so. You want to leave a little bit when you go to cut this. You want to leave enough around the sides that gives you a large enough area to actually pull the stencil. And this will all make sense once we take this top trans or um, once we take the bottom off and the transfer paper off. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, so now we're kind of in a spot that, like I said, we're just gonna line this up with the coin door here and just kind of get it in a spot that looks somewhat straight. And uh, yeah, so I just kind of lined it up with the lock hole. That's what I did with the Gottlieb one. And then in terms of it being straight, just kind of with the coin return bezels. And like I said, it's not gonna be perfect. No one's staring at your coin door though. So whatever you do, it's, it's really not a huge, huge deal. If it's a little bit off, no one's gonna notice. Yeah, so it's like somewhere right there. Uh, so essentially the back of this has an adhesive and the front is uh, what they call transfer paper and Chance made these with his cry cut at home. Um, I've never used one before, but they look pretty cool. And uh, if I had one, I would have just made it myself. Yeah, that's pulling the transfer paper. We don't want that. There we go. 
Now we're pulling the adhesive from the actual decal. And you just wanna carefully peel this back, making sure everything's staying. Yeah, look, the, the center of the E didn't wanna come with, so you gotta push it back down. So now this decal is, is ready to get put on. And essentially you're just gonna line it up the same way that we are doing it. And uh, you really only have one shot at this. So kind of just like hover it above and when you feel like it's in a good spot, just go ahead and, and put it down. And that's really like your one, one and only time to get this thing right. And you can kind of get away with it if you make sure it doesn't separate from the transfer paper and uh, your stencil will kind of stay intact. And I didn't really like the placement of that one because I felt like it was too far over. Okay. That right there looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down. And when you put this down, you really want to, um, you really want this to be nice and adhered um, because this clear that's on here is gonna get pulled off and the clear is called transfer paper. So the clear is another adhesive that's holding the stencil down. Um, so you just wanna make sure that everything is pushed to the coin door, all the black here. And you just wanna make sure everything it's pushed down, especially all your floating points. Um, you know, the center of your E, the lines between your I and your T, at least on the Century logo. And uh, you just really wanna make sure that is pressed down. And that right there looks pretty good to me. So we are gonna try to pull an edge of the transfer paper here, which is, like I said, it's the clear top layer and you just wanna get an edge. Try to go to the edge where you have the most black vinyl to, uh, to play with, and I'm, I'm getting a corner now. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better. There we go. So I'm getting a corner of this transfer paper. There we go, it's starting to peel. And you want to be careful as you peel this transfer paper off because like I said, you just want to be real slow and make sure, you know, your E stays down and all your lines and everything stay and you just push this very slowly, just be nice and methodical. And Chance sent me three of these, so if I screw one up, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, what does, what you can't go back on is once you start painting. So now that it's down, um, we're just gonna have to painter's tape off this coin door. But once you get it down, just go kind of come through and push it into place. I wish um, he didn't have any white vinyl, so it's kind of hard to see it on the black. But um, the way this is, and let me fix the, uh, the camera, but now we have a stencil that when we go to spray paint, 
it's going to adhere to the coin door. So there we go. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. So just press your stencil down, make sure all your little marks and stuff are, uh, are good. Your E, the center of your E is gonna be hard to get off. Um, just cause those are all kind of like separate, separate marks. So. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna painter's tape. Um, let me zoom out. Now that I have it completely on and ready to go, I'm just gonna painter's tape this entire coin door, not the bottom half, just the top half to make sure everything's good. Once we painter's tape, I'll get the camera set up and we'll just go ahead and spray paint this and pull the stencil. So let me get this taped up and then we will start painting. All right guys, so I got the coin door completely painter's taped off. Um, like I said, I didn't do the bottom. We're only spraying across there. I got a piece of cardboard on the ground. I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum two times ultra cover paint and primer, satin blossom white. So this is just a satin white. Um, shake this real quick, you know, give it a little test spray. Okay, so we're good there. My plan is uh, I'm gonna do two coats and these are just gonna be quick coats. I'm just gonna do like two pass throughs, wait 15 minutes, come back, two pass throughs with the spray can. And then after that, we'll wait about five minutes and we're gonna pull the stencil and that's it. So um, we'll just do these initial two pass-throughs and uh, kind of go from there. So, you know, give it, a, give it a test spray and then just, we'll do three. Okay, so there you go. There's, uh, there's the first one. Now I'm gonna set a 15 minute timer and uh, we're gonna come back. Zoom in a little bit. All right, guys, it's been a uh, it's been a full 15 minutes. Um, so that was that was the first coat. We are just gonna come back through and do the exact same thing on a second coat, except this time I'm gonna set a four minute timer. And after four minutes, we are gonna come back and uh, we're gonna start pulling the painter's tape. That way, around the five minute mark, we're actually pulling the stencil. So once again, two quick coats. And there we go. That's uh, three pass-throughs. Looks like uh, some pretty good coverage to me. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna leave that. Uh, you don't wanna over-pour this thing with paint. I'm gonna set a five-minute timer. Um, when I did Cubert, I think I did a little too much paint. And when you went to pull the stencil, it kinda, it kinda caused some issues. So I got a five-minute timer set right now and around the four minute mark, I'm gonna start pulling um, all of this painter's tape off. And once we get that painter's tape off, all that'll be left is the stencil. Pull the whole stencil. The only thing that'll be left is the inside of the E. And I got a pair of tweezers here that I can just kind of tweeze the inside of the E out. And hopefully this should, this should look perfect when we're done. Yeah, I don't see any areas that, that are gonna need more paint. It, it looks really good, even coverage. Hopefully this one will be a lot cleaner than the, uh, the Gottlieb one was on Qbert. That one turned out really nice, but um, the inside of the E on Gottlieb didn't turn out the best. And like I said, I think I did too much paint, so it kind of messed with it a little bit. But this one, this one should be really good when it's done. I'm trying to see if it needs a little more paint on the bottom. Mm, it looks pretty full to me, honestly. All right, we should be good. We'll come back, start pulling the paint off, and then we can pull the stencil, and hopefully this should turn out pretty nice. All right, guys, so it's, uh, it's been about four minutes, and I'm just gonna start pulling all of our tape and just putting it in a garbage bag that I have here. And we are just gonna pull just like this. And now that that's done, pretty much all of this can just come off as uh, three, and you just gotta be careful how you pull around the stencil so you don't lift the stencil up. 
And all right, we're free from the stencil. Kind of stuck to the bag, but that's fine. And the same thing here, pull straight across. That's free there. So now we have to get a corner of the uh, the stencil up and pull this stencil. So I want to do it from the um, from this side because this side is the side that it'll be easier to pull all of the um, the lines in the Century logo that go between the I, or the T and the I. So, see if you can get a corner of this peeled up. Um, it's not gonna be the easiest. These things actually adhere pretty well. So, like I said, Try to get a corner pulled up and just before we get here, there we go. And just slowly pull our stencil off. All right, we'll have to come back for uh, part of the C there. Yeah, and this is the exact reason you don't want to use too much paint is um, And anything that rips off, we can just come back and try to fix. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's the main part of the stencil off. And um, we can just try to come in and, and just take our pliers. I may use a better set than this because these don't want to grab. Let me grab my tweezers and uh, it ripped off on me. Same thing. Just pull this, just go slow and methodical. We'll uh, try to grab the C here. Okay, and now all we have left is the inside of this E. If we can grab an edge, and this will be the hardest one to do. There we go. So it's inside of the E was definitely the hardest one to do. It um, it's not perfect, but that looks pretty incredible, honestly. Um, so now we just leave it. So let me zoom into that so you guys can see how good it looks. I don't know if there's something on the. Uh, there we go. Kind of evened itself out but yeah the lines really um really even themselves out and and this this looks pretty pretty good i don't really want to touch the edge of that e but i can't tell if there's like a little bit from the stencil 
or what it is, but I mean, from a distance, it's not like you'll be able to tell. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as is, even though the perfect edge of it isn't perfect on the inside of that E, it looks really good. So I'm gonna leave this, we're gonna let it sit. Um, we're just gonna let it sit and dry. But I mean, that looks that looks really good. Let me take, let me take my uh, gloves off and I can actually get close and show you guys how it looks. All right, gotta be careful. I don't wanna get too close with this. Okay. Yeah, that, um, you really cannot see like any imperfections in that. That turned out much better than the first time. Um, definitely use a little less paint. So like the two pass-throughs that I do, that looks really good. Wow. All right, wow, thanks for the, thanks for the, stenc the stencil. It's a chance. That looks incredible. Awesome. Well, that's one big thing done. And, you know, the second big thing is um, the fact that we got this speaker panel in. I'm going to have to do some wood filler on the edges, but, you know, speaker panels in and the, and the coin door logo's done, which, which is a huge weight off my shoulders. So, all right, guys. All right, guys. Well, it's been about 15 minutes. We can see how this is setting up. It looks absolutely perfect. I mean, the, the white is even drying in a way that it looks like it's almost like a sticker on there. It looks so even. So definitely doing less paint on this one was the way to go. I think when I did the Qvert one, I, I definitely used too much paint. I probably did five or six pass-throughs on each coat, and it was just way too much paint that built up. On this one, we did enough. We waited those five minutes. It was huge, and it looks really good. So our, our work paid off on that. And like I said, with this, it uh, looks absolutely perfectly center in the cabinet we have a brand new one no more crack down the center here our holes are drilled for our hardware when we're ready for that and then all of this i'm just going to take a little wood filler and just fill these in um, here this one right here it wasn't catching right i didn't like how it was so i just went a little lower and more to the right so we're going to have to fill that hole right there with some wood filler um, but you know easy stuff just getting getting the leg leveler situation handled and the speaker panel. I mean, this is this is big stuff that we got done today, so that that helps us a ton now. So now we can start working. I still got to sand down a lot of these brackets. A lot of these brackets have like garbage paint on them. We're gonna sand them down, repaint them, get a nice coat on all these brackets here. The monitor ones I don't care about. Those ones will stay black. It, it doesn't matter. Um, we have to start sanding our hardware down. These have to get repainted. This stuff has to get repainted. Um, our bolts have to get painted. I already cleaned this stuff up. I cleaned up the monitor as well. Um, I didn't wash it because I had a lot of rain the last week. Um, so I just cleaned the whole thing with Simple Green, got all the, the garbage off the corners from the adhesive. It's got some track and field burn, but behind the tinted bezel, not a big deal. I ordered a new tinted bezel because mine was super scratched up i'll tell you guys about that when when we get there um i haven't cleaned up the board but i cleaned up the entire tube um so i just need to clean the board up board still has to come out i'm leaving it for now so um i still have to wire up the new control panel put the overlay on it you know all of that but you know where we're at right now we we have a ton of stuff done and now we can start working on um, sanding and painting those brackets we can get the control panel done and then we're gonna have to start doing bondo on the uh, on the cabinet so I'm not looking forward to bondo but it's got to get done uh, I bought some aluminum L brackets we're gonna wrap them in Teflon tape and just kind of put them on each corner of the cabinet and hopefully we can use those L brackets to rebuild our corners uh, I'm gonna have to borrow a router from someone to recut the T molding channel on all the screwed up corners because those nails just completely blew it out. But I mean, we're, we're getting a lot of stuff done. It's, it's just gonna take a while. So that, um, that wraps up this week's episode, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.